Hi, I'm Ed, and today I want to go through uh, setting up a, a Berg's uh, fuel extension system for a Honda generator. All right, so the Berg's system. Open this guy up. Basically, it's a aluminum machined cap. Okay, and then it comes with some high quality. Uh, fuel hose and then when you look very closely it has this uh, different uh, aircraft, aircraft grade um, type of a plug and it's uh, got a little uh, a port on here so that way uh, when you disconnect this uh, it won't uh, spray fuel everywhere and then it comes with uh, this little port right here so that way this is what plugs on to the uh, to the fuel can um, and then you have a uh, little 90 degree angle for the top of the fuel cap. And then this is the other side of this. It goes onto the end of your fuel line. Also a Teflon uh, wrap on here. So we can go ahead and get that all set up. Lots of instructions on here as well. Um, okay, so just in case you, uh, you're, you're wondering, um, I did not get the, the kit that uh, has the fuel tank um, on, the, um, on the Berg system. Um, I, I said got a different fuel tank. The reason why is because I wanted to make sure that I got a fuel tank that has some type of a fuel gauge uh, indicator on it. Um, I also, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding a quick disconnect um, onto this. Um, this is a plastic one um, because I figure this is a plastic uh, part on the uh, fuel tank. I should be able to get away with this. Um, one of the uh, points of criticism that people are, uh, seem to have on this particular uh, Berg system, uh, after looking very closely at this, uh, people can seem to complain on the on the price point. Uh, but when looking at this uh, on some of the other cheaper uh, platforms, um, this is a pretty uh, high quality uh, piece of aluminum. And then looking at this, this seems to be a pretty uh, high high grade uh, type of port, considering the uh, the way it shuts off and everything like that make, you know, makes makes the seal. And so what you're actually paying for is um, this piece right here and the reality is if you were to try and buy just this this component here as well as the opposing um, valve piece um, the opposing joint um, these two parts alone on the end of this would be probably somewhere between uh, 45 and 65 dollars just these two parts alone so um, that's part of the reason why the, the the cost of this particular kit is so expensive um, is because of the um, these two joining uh, pieces with the automatic uh, fuel shut off of, so it doesn't spray uh, fuel everywhere because it's, uh, it's full metal and everything like that. You can get away with, with plastic um, but, you know, for say 10 or 15 bucks, but uh, you don't know how well it's gonna, gonna seal, how, well, uh, how fast it's gonna rot and everything like that. So I'm most likely gonna be changing this out with, uh, with a metal one uh, in the future, but just for right now, just to get, get started off with and testing this out for a first season, uh, plastic one should do fine and considering it's also plastic coming directly off the tank, it should do uh, nicely. Okay, so remember you are go ahead and apply your uh, Teflon tape and go ahead and thread it through correctly so that way as you go ahead and spin your um, your parts uh, into the, into here, uh, it doesn't uh, shred your, your Teflon into there. So uh, obviously it's going to be going well with the threads. Um, all your instructions are, are in here to be able to follow this, uh, this correctly. But here's our, our cap um, built on here. And then one of the things um, you're going to go ahead and set up, uh, this is going to be a, just a little bit of a challenge for you when you just kind of think about you're going to pull the, uh, the cap off. I've already done this, but uh, when you first go ahead and take this off, you're going to have this retainer clip. I've already pulled this off, but I'll go ahead and show you anyways. Uh, you're going to have this little retainer clip, this little plastic goodie um, on here. Uh, this is designed so that way you don't lose the cap. And it's going to be attached on here like this. And it's, it's going to have this like this little cotter pin on here. So what you got to do is you got to reach in here. It's actually going to be on the other side of the plastic here. But what you got to do is reach in here with like a little screwdriver, kind of like this. You got to reach in here and kind of grab the uh, little pin. You got to pull it out, but you got to be careful that you don't drop the pin down into the. So if you have a magnetic screwdriver like that, like I do, it'll make it really easy, like this. So then you can go ahead and pull the disconnect the uh, the plastic. Now because of the way that there's like there's like a little wishbone uh, type of a goodie uh, underneath the uh, the filter. So what you can do is you just kind of just gently push down and kind of stuff it right here so it doesn't impede the flow. So you can still see the, the, the everything down there. And then what you do is while holding the, the rest of the cap, kind of push it back in and then reattach this. So if you ever wanted to hook it back up, 
you can do that. So when you're putting the, the, your generator back in storage, you still have your original cap, okay? And it still works just like normal. See, there's your little tensioner. Okay, so it keeps you from over tightening it. Now, when you go ahead and switch to the Berg system, okay, what you do is you set that aside. Now, check your, you know, obviously your, there's your gasket in there. Some of the other cheap ones may have a, a different, uh, different gasket in there, and those things are going to leak. Uh, this one seems to have a pretty decent one on here. Uh, it tells you don't over tighten this. So what you're going to do is just make sure it doesn't hop threads, and you go ahead and tighten this down. And then when it gives you resistance, that's when you go ahead and stop, because that resistance tells you it's it's seated up against the uh, up against the gasket. Now remember, it doesn't it doesn't do the clickings like the uh, the standard standard one. So there, there we go. There's the resistance. So we don't want to over tighten it. So we're good to go. Okay. So this is the Atwood sprayless connector. So you can see a little uh, ball uh, fitting on there. So that way, uh, when you disconnect it, it won't uh, it won't spray. It just clicks in there pretty easily, like that, and then hit that and disconnect. So this is the side we're going to be putting on the uh, on the tank. It already has the Teflon already on there, so we'll just go ahead and just screw that in there. Just make sure we don't over tighten it, and then we'll go ahead and uh, um, snip the um, the side on the on, on the, uh, the hose, and then we'll go ahead and uh, use a hose clamp. I'll probably get a smaller one. We'll get that attached. I'll use this one for now, and then we'll I'll, I'll swap it out for a smaller one. And then we'll go ahead and test it out. Okay, so I think we're just about ready to test uh, this out. So um, I got the little uh, sprayless connector uh, set up. Uh, I still have to put a hose clamp on here, but uh, for right now, I got this uh, stretched out and uh, and put on here. So it's not really going to go anywhere. It shouldn't make any leaks for right now. But uh, before our first trip, I'm going to go ahead and put a hose clamp on here. So it's just a matter of connecting that on there like this. Connect it on here. I'm going to go ahead and fill this up with gas. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this started up. I have. Uh, this guy filled up, but I'm going to go ahead and, uh, like I said, fill this up. We're going to run a test and uh, see how well this works and uh, put a load on it. Okay, so before we got got started on this, uh, we heard a little bit of gurgling on this, which told me that I didn't have the uh, the cap tightened down all the way. But uh, just being here in the sun, uh, the tank started building just a little bit of pressure, so it started pushing just a little bit of uh, a fuel up into this, So which means it was already uh, getting up into here. So if I go ahead and, and pop this, you get just a little bit of drop from here, so get just a little, just a tiny little droplet of a uh, fuel on this. But that's basically all the uh, little uh, leakage that you get from the from this, which is which is pretty good. So you get just a tiny little bit, but that's it. Um, so as long as you have this uh, this tightened down all the way, it should make a seal. But if you hear any gurgling, then uh, you need to tighten it down just a smidge more, and then it should be uh, should be good to go. I have read some of the reviews that uh, some people make a minor modification to the uh, to the cap of this, so this is already loosened up uh, on here, so it should be breathing just a little bit. Um, but uh, regardless, uh, it, it's uh, it's already uh, pushing uh, fuel up into the uh, into the tank already. So. We'll run some tests a little, a little bit, and uh, we'll let you guys know. All right, so we're running the generator here with uh, with a bit of a load. Um, it's a little noisy, but you know, it's uh, we're running the full air conditioner on on, on the system, and uh, we're going to go ahead and shut the uh, the load off. And if the, the system is working, then what we'll have is uh, our fuel tank on the generator will be completely full, even though we had a load on it because we did not have the tank all the way full. Uh, when we started, so that'll prove if the uh, the Berg system is uh, is working because it'll be pumping fuel from our auxiliary tank into the generator. Okay, so disconnect of our fuel line here. Go ahead and, and the sun makes this a little tighter. A little bit tougher to. Take off here. All right. So there we go. Looks like I have more fuel than uh, than I started with. I don't recall the uh, yeah the fuel was not that high. So yeah, it looks like the uh, it was uh, it was siphoning fuel successfully from the from the auxiliary tank. So looks like the system was working. That's awesome. All right, so if we're just packing this up, I'll go ahead and
close the valve on the top. Make sure this guy's uh, tightened down. I'll go ahead and keep this uh, uh, stowed away in the, in the shade. And then for this other side that I uh, put on, it's kind of nice that it, it spins. Uh, same, same as the other side. Just uh, disconnect this. So that guy dribbles out just a little bit more than the other side. Uh, but what I'll be doing is uh, I'll probably be finding a, some sort of a, a of a safe bag. So let's see. But it did. I know there's fuel in the line, but see, it's not it's not, it's not dribbling out. So that's this is the reason why I wanted to have a, a connector on, on both sides. So when I disconnect it, it's not going to be spraying fuel everywhere. So I'm, I'm packing this thing up and get ready to to, to pack out. Um, this is a lot easier, and I don't have fumes uh, all over the place. So I can go ahead and find a bag of some kind and go ahead and just stow the the cap, stow the uh, the fuel line, and then just go ahead and and uh, put this either in the back of the. Uh, the vehicle or uh, wherever this is going to end up going so easier to pack up and ready to go so this was the the Berg's uh, fuel uh, system for expanding the runtime of a generator system um, if this was any helpful uh, information to you please hit the like and subscribe buttons and uh, happy trails <laughs>